Good morning, dear learners. I'm Larmina. The last we are learning MPC 004 Advanced Social Psychology. In the last session, I have told, I have mentioned about the first unit. So the next unit is Social Cognition Attribution Theory. It's a very important chapter. And it is very essential for our life also. So let's start with the introduction. So in the chapter we are learning, understanding, we are learning these objectives, understanding social behavior, how people process information and make judgments about others, and how we can explain the causes behind a particular behavior of ours and our others how to form overall impression and how that impression or information is stored and organized in memory so first we can learn what is person perception and social cognition so in how to learn person perception I'll explain through an example the study was conducted by Harold Kelly. He actually gave a group to of stu uh, group to students one of two descript descriptions of a lecturer whom they had never met, and then had the lecturer lead a discussion. So, in the first case, the students were told that the lecturer was a rather warm person, industrious, critical, practical, and determined. But in the second condition, a group of students were told that the same lecturer was a rather cold person, industrious, critical, practical and determined. So the difference is, for the first groups, he told that the per lecturer is a warm person, industrious like that. In the second group, it is like this lecturer is a cold person, industrious like that. So dif the difference is between warm and cold. And after the session we can see and the session was given by the lecturer at the same time for the same two groups and after the session the students who were told that the lecturer was cold rated him far less positively after the discussion than those who were told that he was firm although the behavior of the lecturer was invariant across the two conditions so it shows the impression which has given them before the session so how our first impression affects our thoughts so that was the thing which was explained by Harold Kelly so he illustrates an early view of person perceptions which concentrated on the way in which individuals focus on particular traits when forming overall impression of others and according to this perspective certain traits play an unusually large role like in this example warm and cold these are the two traits they play an unusually large role in determining general impression and these traits are known as central traits and these central traits serves to organize the impression and provide a framework for interpreting information that is received subsequently and and these addition and the additional traits like i told about industrious critical practical and determined these are the additional traits that traits meaning will be altered by the presence of that central trait okay so person perception it is the way in which individuals focus on particular traits when forming overall impression of others then there are two models additive and average models averaging models for forming impressions so according to additive model we simply add together bits of information we have about a person to form a judgment. 
and in a, a, a averaging model what we are doing is we start in the same way there is a, but there is an additional step in which we divide by the number of trades to form an average so in this model uh in this model we are adding uh, it is it is uh, what is particularly important in this averaging model is that the inclusion of additional information cannot make cannot necessarily make the impression more positive so it depends on the nature of the new traits then comes impression formation this is an important topic that can be uh, that can be uh, seen in your previous question papers for two marks questions so impression formation there is a study by luchens in 1957 it is a it is considered as a classic study so he gave subjects a two paragraph description of a boy named jim so in the one first paragraph the jim walking to the school it's portrayed like this the jim was walking to the school with others and participating in uh many group activities in short he was portrayed as an extrovert in the second paragraph the activities described were similar but jim did them all alone thus appearing as introvert all of you know what is introvert and extrovert so no need to explain that so subjects were presented with the two paragraphs but the order was reversed so to he gave this information to two groups but the order of this paragraph was reversed according to condition so when asked to form an overall impression of jim's subjects responses demonstrated a strong primacy effect there are two kinds of effect that is primacy effect and recency effect so in the primacy effect early information has a stronger impact than later information so if subject had read the extrovert paragraph first they found them they found that the jim is more extrovert but for the subjects who read the introvert paragraph first they form the impression that the jim is more introvert okay so these are the this is the condition so it shows the effect of shows the effect of primacy effect then comes on the other hand this recency effect in this thing the later information is given more weightage than early information okay and it is it can be more seen when there is reasons like if we if they ask to make a second evaluation if there is relatively large time span between these two and the and if the later information is heavier than the earlier and people always assume that practice can might practice might improve performance in this condition also we'll give more weightage to recency effect so impression formation the definition it is the impression formation deals with the processes involved in the formation of impression about others how we form impression about others that is impression formation through which we develop our beliefs and evaluations of other people so it is a process it is it refers to the process through which we combine diverse information about other persons into a unified or united impression of them and these are the factors that can affect impression first one is sources of input the information from sources we trust or sources we trust or admire is weighted more heavily than information from sources we distrust second is the positive and negative nature of information we usually give more weightage to negative information about others than positive information it is because of the automatic vigilance we have 
then about the unusual or extreme behavior the information that describes behavior or traits that are unusual or extreme are more valued and weighted then comes the primacy effect and recency effect in primacy effects information received first tends to be weighted more heavily than information received later in recency effect i've told it it uh, it, ha it happens when we make second evaluation and if there is more time span between the first and second and it is because of our assumption that the practice makes man improved then comes the schemas schemas are mainly uh, we can say that schemas are the mental frameworks that centering on specific theme that help us to organize social information and impression about others we can say that it is the bodies of information stored in memory so we are living because of our schema we can say we all we all store the information with our schemas like for example if we if i say a pen we have the schema about a pen if i if i say about a marriage we have a schema about how a marriage will be so all our thoughts are because of the schemas that we have stored in our memory so there are different types of schemas self schema person schema role schema and event schema these are the four types of schemas so self schema it is for organizing knowledge about our self knowledge how we store about ourselves the information about ourselves how we will behave in a particular situation then comes the schemas for other individuals how that person will behave in a particular situation that is called person schema then role schema it is the schema for social roles how a teacher will behave how a monk will behave how a nun will behave how a social activist will behave in a certain situations that is role schema then schemas for events or situation are called event schema like i told you how a marriage will be how a death ceremony will be that is the event schema all these are the bodies of information that we have stored in our memory then comes the prototypes prototypes are schemas that organized a group of personality traits into a meaningful personality type for example monks nuns activists like so it is a personality type that we derive in the case of person's perceptions are organized into schemas so it allows why these prototype schemas are there it allows people to recall more readily recognize and categorize information so it is basically to organize the social world around us and to plan behavior in social interactions more readily like how we can how we will behave to our teacher how we will behave to our politicians how we will behave to a social activist how our social interactions will be so all depends on how we store the information in our memory it is all because of our schemas next comes attributions explaining the causes of behavior so next attribution is explaining the causes of behavior so the process of attribution it is the individual's understanding of the reasons behind people's behavior so why a particular person behaves in that in a particular way so we are finding the reasons behind his or her behavior it is a theory that is concerned with how individuals interpret events and how this relates to their thinking and behavior 
Hader was the first to propose his psychological theory of attribution. Then came the Weiner, Weiner and colleagues. Then Johns and Davis. These people were the major proponents in this research area. So the first theory is is given by Johns, Jurgen and Davis in 1961. So the theory is situational versus dispositional causes. So according to this theory, the external reasons will be there if the cause is external and if the cause is internal then internal dispositional variables will be there. So behavior will be attributed to an in external cause if the external reasons are more likely or plausible. Conversely behavior will be attributed to dispositional factors like personality variables when the external causes are unlikely and internal causes are more. The next theory is given by co uh, uh, given by Harold Kelly. The theory is co-variation principle. Co-variation principle. So he suggests that there are many possible cause and effect relationships inherent in a situation that provide a possible explanation for a particular behavior. So many factors can affect a person to behave in a particular way. And according to his principle, an observer can use one of the three specific types of causes to explain an effect. So there are mainly three types of causes. The first cause is surrounding on that particular individual. So he is considered as an actor, the individual who is demonstrating that behavior. So the reason will be focused around this person. The second is the type of cause that is surrounding the entity or the target person or the thing at which the behavior is directed. The third is the circumstances, the setting or the social situations under which the behavior occurs. And this theory focused on how people decide whether to make an internal or external attribution or cause and on instances where there are multiple observations of behavior. So it explains the attribution process as a search for information about which a particular behavior is correlated with or co-varies with. So when the behavior is correlated with a situation, it is called external attribution. And when the behavior is correlated with a person, it call, it's called as internal attribution. So whether it is external cause, whether it is due to external reasons or whether it is due to personal reasons. Like personal characteristics, personality characteristics, etc. And the causal information can be of three types. Let's see with an example. If a teacher sees that a person or a student is sleeping in his class, then immediately he will look to other students also whether the other persons are also sleeping. That is called as consensus information. The extent to which other people behave in the same way towards the same situation as the actor does. Then comes the distinctiveness information. The teacher checks whether the student is sleeping in his class and how he behaves in the other teacher's classes. Whether any distinctions between this two. The extent to which one particular actor behaves in the same way to different stimuli. That that is concerned with whether the behavior occurs in other similar situations. Okay. Then comes the third information that is consistency. Whether the person sleeps in all other classes, in all other teachers classes also. So it refers to whether the behavior occurs repeatedly when these three sources of information come and 
these three sources of information is combined into one of the distinct patterns a clear attribution can be made so with this information with these three informations we can see whether the reason is coming from within that actor or is due to other situations including the teacher or other social situations in which he comes from so for example we can say that if the low if there is low sense consensus that is if no other students are sleeping and whether if there is low distinctiveness that is the student is sleeping in other teachers class also and if there is high consistency the student sleeps repeatedly in all days then we can say that the behavior is due to internal causes and we can say that it is internal attribution hope it is clear for you and other situations also has written then comes the third theory that is from acts to disposition it is called as correspondent inference theory and it's developed by johns and davis edward e johns and keith davis in 1965 So the theory explains how people infer that a person's behavior corresponds to an in underlying disposition or personality traits whether the behavior is due to his or her personality trait or not the personality the situational there are two types of variables like internal and external causes or variables the internal causes are otherwise called as dispositional variables and external causes are called as situational variables so the dispositional cause is preferred as it is stable and renders always we used to prefer dispositional cause as it is very easy to form and renders people's behavior more predictable and increases the sense of control also so in this theory we should focus on three major aspects if a person behaves in a particular way we will check whether it has social desirability whether it is due to pressure or whether it is due to whether it is freely chosen i mean whether it is of free spirit or not okay the next is whether it is non whether it is due to non common effects and whether the third factor is whether it is freely chosen by the individual or not for example if we see a person if we see a very beautiful smart educated girl marrying to a to an uneducated not good looking person and also not educated we we can see that the social desirability is found to be low and it is a free it is fa- found to be low and we can we can check whether it is freely chosen by the girl or not whether it is due to her family's pressure or not so if we see that the social desirability is low and the person's decision is freely chosen then we can say and we are finding that the decision was taken only because of one factor that is this person is a millionaire so the money was the only factor so it's non common effect so we can see we can say that the person is a greedy person and the action is due to internal causes or dispositional factors so we can see that the that particular behavior corresponds to his or her underlying disposition or personality trait like greediness okay so these are the major theories first one is 
situational versus dispositional causes second one is covariation principle and the third one is corresponding inference theory by Johns and Davis so next comes the attribution errors so even though we we behave like detectives behind other persons behind the reasons of other person's beha behavior sometimes we may go wrong in our attribution why it is so so attribution errors fundamental attribution error it is the first one it is a tendency to overvalue disposition or personality based explanations for the observed behaviors of others while undervaluing situational explanations for those behaviors so if a person if a student go got low mass we will say that the person is lazy so we are focusing or we are more valuing the dispositional factors and undervaluing the situational factors like maybe he is coming from a very uh, poor socio-economic background or poor family situations with many uh, disruptive causes within that so it does not explain the interpretation of one's own behavior where situational factors are often taken into considerations so this description discrepancy is called as actor observer bias the second one is person positivity bias it is a tendency to rate others in a predominantly positive way like for example public figures we will see that these person are having more positive traits. So it is called as person positivity bias. It is based on Pollyanna principle like we enjoy being surrounded by a pleasant world. It is a matter of security also. So perceived similarity, relaxed evaluation standards, individual evaluation pattern also account for this bias. Next comes self-serving bias. In this case, explanation for one's success that credit internal dispositional factors and explanations for one's failures that blame external situ situational factors. Like for example, if a person got good marks in their exam, they will say that I worked hard for the exam to get these better results for me. And if there is a failure, we will say that the exam was tough, the syllabus was, and the questions was are more of out of syllabus and the teachers teaching method was so poor that we were not able to follow her like that so the next is belief in a just world it is a form of defensive attribution this is a, a fourth bias wherein the people assume that bad things happen to bad people and that good things happen to good people if something bad happened to others we will say that it's because of their bad deeds that they come across the situation then comes the fifth one that is halo effect in this case it is based on the implicit personality theory the phenomenon in which initial familiarity that a person has positive traits is used to infer other uniformly positive characteristics if we see one person as social we will feel that that person will help us in a certain critical situation but it may not be possible sometimes so that is halo effect then comes the attribution so we mentioned about various theories of attribution and the attribution biases next comes the attribution theory and its applicability in education so attribution theory how it explains success and failures of individuals so it may be internal or external it can be stable or unstable and it can be controllable or uncontrollable so it is also known as attribution theory of motivation it's given by bernard weiner it's he said that all the factors influencing achievement or motivation can be classified as effort, ability, luck and level of task difficulty. 
so these factors mainly provide the details of the things which are under or beyond our control like for example effort it is considered as internal and it is unstable on which we exercise great deal of control then comes ability it is a stable factor on which we do not have much control and then comes luck it is also it is an external factor and it is unstable also we will not get luck all times then over over which we exercise little control and last one is level of difficulty it is also it is an external factor but it is stable factor which is also beyond our control in this way we can attribute our success and failure and we can say that these are some of the circumstances for persistent academic performance so we should say we should find the failures are due to our internal causes and we should improve further and it is not beneficial to attribute success entirely to ability always and we should attribute failure to the lack of appropriate effort taken by ourselves we should arrange tasks according to our priority according to the priority of tasks and we should define effort correctly it is devoting effective academic learning time to the task and we should always have the belief that we have not yet put forth there our best effort so these are some of the circumstances for persistent good academic performance and we need a moderate healthy competitions and we should evaluate the students at least partially and should have internal locus of control we should not depend on our luck always and some additional concepts these are learning goals performance goals overcoming learned helplessness overcoming self handicapping and the expectancy balance model the value of that goal and the estimation of the likelihood of success next comes understanding one's own behavior how a social comparison helps us to understand ourselves we used to compare others to understand ourselves with social reality and we identify our emotional states by comparing with others and their circumstances how i should i could have been behaved in that particular situation so that is it then bems self perception theory is there it is also important to know it come to know our own emotions attitudes and internal states by inferring them from observations of our own behavior we behave in a situation and we analyze that behavior later and we understand our own behaviors through the observations of our own behaviors and the circumstances in which they occur when internal cues are weak but this situation is there when internal cues are weak we the individual will be same as the outsider to observe our behavior so there comes the end of the session so we we have finished our unit 2 thank you thank you so much